we're now going to start the section on, on copywriting, writing words that persuade, that engage people and hopefully get them to take action. Now you guys should have all got some ideas of keywords and they're sort of important things to incorporate in your copy. Obviously don't go over the top with it, but you now you know the sort of words people are Googling. When you do write your blogs, when you do write profiles, when you when you tweet even, you know, you need to just there's a few concepts that are really powerful in persuading people to take action. And copywriting is such a broad subject, I've only got about 10 minutes, but I thought I'd cover two sort of core elements that we found for working with our clients that really actually engage the reader and get them to take some sort of action. Um, I'm also using some brand new software. Finbar was talking about sort of death by PowerPoint and the problems with PowerPoint. And there's some really cool software I've discovered. Um, hopefully it will work, but it's sort of to make presenting a bit more fun and also a bit more engaging. So let's, let's start off. So the first concept we're talking about is Write for your audience, not yourself. Um, so many people sit down to write copy and go, right, what do I want to say? You know, all the things I want to get off my chest and tell the world about. And that's really actually the wrong place to start. It's actually much better if you start with your audience. You think, who are my target audience? Who am I writing for? Where might they be when they actually sort of open this page or read this copy? And just by starting from, from that premise, from who you're writing for, you start thinking, actually, hmm, I, I might tailor it this way, I might tailor it that way. But there's a few questions that I find I also ask myself as I'm writing copy to sort of really help you with that. Um, so before you start writing, as I said, this is quite funky, who are you writing for? So just make a list of you know, your target audience. I, I kind of find that it's marketing's about getting the right message to the right person and almost targeting them. So do sort of one thing at a time. You know, if you've got slightly different services you offer, then write different bits of copy or different pages tailored to those people. Um, what result do you want from your text? Is it, some people just write a blog or write text or even just have a web page because they think they should rather than they actually have an objective behind it. And I always believe that marketing is about selling the next step. And what's the next step in your selling process? I mean, if you're putting a video up on YouTube that drives traffic to your website, what do you want them to do once they've got to your website? Do you, do you want them to pick up the phone? Do you want them to you know, sign up to a newsletter? Well, what do you want them to do? And when you start breaking it down into a very small step-by-step -step process, you're much more likely to sell things. We find that you know, rather than just trying to sell your services straight off the bat online, just take them for a step-by-step -step process that sort of engages them. The, uh, the next sort of question, ooh, why should they start reading your text? The opening sort of, in, they say in copywriting, 80% of the time, uh, or 80% of your time should be on getting the perfect title. I don't really believe that's the case, but I understand what they're trying to say, that the title's so important, also the first opening mm -hmm. sort of paragraphs. And we're going to get on about benefits in a minute, but just stressing sort of the benefits of what you, you do for people, what you add, and make it um, actually using emotion as well, rather than being a bit dry, sort of saying, my company started in 1940, whatever, actually just sort of saying that, you know, we, you know, we, just engaging with the reader straight away. So if they came to your website, say something like, what brought you here? Perhaps you're interested in this. Maybe you know, you'd like to know about how we've helped people do this, this, and this. And just kind of fill it with something that's engaging, but also um, quite emotive. But just ask that question, why should they start reading? If I was coming to this sort of just, you know, so I clicked from the link and I got to your website, what, why should I keep reading? Especially on the internet as well. People's attention span is so short. You know, if they don't like something, they'll just, they'll close it. So. Just sort of think, well, what, what makes this different? And that leads on to the next bit, which is, will your message stand up from your competition? It's something really interesting. A lot of people, when they write things on the internet about their business, they haven't actually looked what their competition's written. And it's really bad when, it's also disheartening people kind of, I've got a couple of clients in NLP who write, you know, the, the, you know, a bit on their blog on how I can change your life in seven days. Well, lots of NLP practitioners say that as well. So really what makes it different, you know, what, and by just Googling your competition, seeing what they're saying, you might get ideas, but obviously you can also see why well, I need to differentiate myself from that quite heavily. So that's kind of the first core essence, is just thinking about the reader first. Remember the reader and remember the response and think about the response you want to get from them. And just by brainstorming that beforehand, you'll actually approach writing your copy just a bit differently from just going, oh, what do I want to say? You think, hmm, what do people want to hear? The next thing that we found is really quite important actually in selling as well is selling benefits, not features. The distinction is, is if I take an example of my car, my, the feature of my car is it has nine airbags. But the benefit it gives me is 
peace of mind. I think if I'm in a crash, hopefully, you know, <laughs> I've got airbags coming all over the place, so I, I, I should be okay. I mean, so we take sort of Cindy's business, Cindy's a hypnotherapist, so the features of what she does is she puts people into trance, she speaks to their unconscious. But one of the benefits she probably gives people is freedom. Mm. She makes them, you know, she, freedom from a phobia. Or you know, or the confidence you get, and that sort of, and, that, and and if you sell the benefits, the value you add to people's lives, that's so much more powerful than just, oh, you know, I do these things. And also, you need to talk about the features of your service and how you go about it. But if you really make it quite clear, succinctly, the benefit you add, and how that sort of, you know, changes people's life, how sort of people love their new conservatory and how they can do things in it and whatever, and they love sitting there in the summer and just go a bit into that. That we found that's really quite important for sort of the. The selling process. And I think, I think finally, I haven't actually put a thing to this, but um, just have a call to action. Tell people what you want them to do. You know, whenever you write any, t any copy online, just literally just, just tell them what the next step is. Make it quite apparent. Obviously, be polite. Don't say buy my services now, but just sort of say, you know, if, if I struck a chord with you, um, if you'd like to find out a bit more, click here to see a video about my artwork or something. And I think just starting from the reader and also look, t think about the value you're adding in their life and being a bit passionate about it. That's that's a really good way to sell, I think, and it's a bit more genuine as well, rather than you know any sort of manipulative stuff. You're just being yourself, and you're talking about the value you've improved in people's lives, and rather than say that I've done it, just talk about your clients as well. You know, I've helped someone do this, helped someone do that, and it's actually quite a nice thing. And I don't know we found it's really effective in writing copy that way, um, and also trying to get the keywords in as well where you can within that context. But so you had a question or was that? No, just um, you talk, um, the, the testimonial aspect. Yes. Uh, of trying to sort of mm. make sure that if, it, if people are actually sort of putting pen to paper and writing back positively, yeah. how can you, um, <coughs> I mean obviously that's quite good to put in I guess, but does it in a, in a blog sense or sort of Twitter or whatever, I mean that's that sort of kind of smack to advertising, would that be right? Yeah, I mean, I guess you, you, you certainly wouldn't tweet a, a testimonial, right. but you might tweet a link to somewhere that has a testimonial. Or actually, well, actually you know, you, you get... You we, get had a, we had a lovely one the other day. Someone um, was sending a recommendation for us and did a little play on words and said it was a Rebecca mendation. And this got yeah. tweeted everywhere because it was funny. So I think that's the thing, is that people are interested in things that are interesting. They're not no. just going to be interested in a plug for your business. But if, there's an, you know, if you can phrase it in a fun way or... Mm sort of put it across there, you know, don't put the recommendation up there, put a link to it and say, I'm really chuffed because I just got this recommendation. Well, if I like yeah. you, then I might be to click through and see what that yeah. recommendation okay. was. And that's mm. how, you know, so not putting it up as advertising, yeah. putting it up slightly more yeah. Personally. Yeah. I think, to just remember you're speaking to people here, I think it's so interesting when I see p people writing their own copy and they're writing it as if they're trying to be like a marketing salesman or something, or they're trying to be like some sort of, they're just not being themselves. And actually, remember you're speaking to people on these social networking it's sites, and it's, it? yeah, it is, but, yeah, exactly. Like, uh, it is, you know, I, mean, I, I really like being polite when I write copy because I think you need to be respectful of people and stuff and just, you know, focus on the positive and just remember you're speaking to a person here rather than, you know, you're trying to be clever because people can see through that and these days, you know, it's just, I don't think it works. So.